Hi there, I wanted to uh, provide an update on the character and word tracking uh, in Unity with Text Mesh Pro. Now, if you're new to this, uh, I guess, topic uh, and just tuning in, here's why this is uh, something that I'm working on. So if I enter play mode, you will see that as I mouse over individual characters, they are being assigned a random color. Um, and if I mouse over a word like this word and click on it, then the whole word changes color. So basically I'm implementing functionality that will allow you to interact with either individual characters, individual words, a line of text, or even links as I add those. And this functionality is also needed for the runtime text input component. Now in Unity, uh, with the UI text component and the event system, you can certainly detect a click or uh, pointer enter or pointer exit on a word, uh, not a word, but on an entire text object. But in this case, I'm showing more advanced functionality where you can track individual characters. So how does this work? So let's go back to the scene view and take a look at a few things. So in a previous video, I talked about um, this little utility a class or script that I created called text info debug tool. This is a tool that's available on the user forum, text mesh pro user forum. And I created this uh, first for myself to help me visualize the content of the text info class in text mesh pro, which uh, holds information about every character, every word, every line links. Eventually it contains information about the mesh and so on and so forth. So this little script is uh, pretty handy. Uh, because I can simply uh, choose what I want to visualize like characters and it shows me all the characters or uh, choose the words and I can see the words themselves uh, show the lines as we can see here and the cyan uh, line allows me to see where the baseline is but going back to words uh, it helps me visualize in the sense that here's an interesting thing as I was working on this uh, and some of my users were also working on this, they ran into the following issue. So if I was to do word wrapping, whoops, make sure I click the thing correctly. As you can see here, the word character is still one word, but because of word wrapping, it's being split into two lines. So now I'm showing how uh, I'm tracking how the different bounding volumes or bounding rectangles for that single word, uh, it splits it up. If I was to split the word character on three lines, like so, you can see that it's still tracking it. So if I enter play mode, which this is not visually cool, but if I was to click on character here, it changes the whole word. If I was to click here, it changes the whole word and if I was to click here. So it's still tracking it as one individual word, although the word is now defined by three different regions. Okay, uh, so that's a minor uh, update on that portion of it. Now in terms of the tracking, how does it work and how will it work and how will you be able to use it? Uh, let's go to the boring stuff. So I'm gonna go in Visual Studio and show you that I created a utility class called TMP Text Utility. In there, I've added some functions. One of them is find intersecting character. And with this function, you're gonna pass a reference to the text object itself. And it could be a text mesh pro component that works with the mesh renderer, or it could be a text mesh pro UGY component, which works with the Canvas system, Unity 4.6, 5.0, and the new UI. Uh, next, you need to pass a position, which is the position you wanna to check to see if there's an intersection with a character. Next, you need to pass a reference to the camera. This is important because the Canvas, for example, can be in overlay mode, screen space, camera mode or in world space uh, uh, mode so we need to know that so we can track uh, screen position relative to the object correctly next this true thing basically allows you to define whether or not you care about only the visible characters or should we report information about the space or tabs and so on and so forth now for the example I'm showing here I don't care about invisible characters, but if I was to do like a runtime text input component, well, I'd still want to be able to detect if you click on a space to enter, uh, insert the caret, for example. So this function, 
returns an integer, which is basically the index of the character that we actually intersect with. If there is no intersection, it returns negative one. If there is one, like I said, it returns the index. And then you can simply look up inside the text mesh pro object, the text info class. So inside character info, we look at whatever index we got, I'm looking for the vertex index in this case. So in order to use this functionality, you know, this section of code is unnecessary, right? This is what I want to do when there's an inter, uh, intersection found. So you could use it in all kinds of ways for your application. In my case, I just wanted to make, you know, vertex colors change. So I kind of digress here, but just to explain what's going on. Um, so here I'm checking if if we have a hit, meaning if it's not negative one, and we're on a different character than the previous one, and I just added that because I don't want, you know, while my cursor sits on a character to change the color 20,000 times, right? Um, so once we're through that, I pick a random color, then I look up the vertex index of where the geometry for that character is, I get a reference to, so again, using this text info class, we're using the mesh info, I'm fetching the color array. Then once I have a reference to the color array, I'm gonna go in and change the colors based on where that character is located. And then I'll shove it right back in the mesh and push that back up so Unity does its thing and updates it. So this function is the find intersecting character. This one here is find intersecting, intersecting words. Uh, there's going to be another one. Let me go back to uh, play mode. So for this type of functionality where you want to see what character you're over, it's kind of cool. There's going to be another one which is find nearest character or find nearest word. This will become more relevant when you're uh, with the text input component because if I was to click here, well actually let me click a little bit further away, you'd still want it to select the word word. Um, right now you have to be on the bounding volumes of it. Um, for words, you know, it's pretty easy to hit the word itself, but when you're trying to insert a caret, the nearest part, you know, if I was to click closer to the W than the D, you'd want the caret to be inserted here. If I was closer to the D, you'd want it to report the D. So anyway, the find nearest will be added as well. So that's uh, basically it for this uh, video update. Again, this is functionality that will allow you to interact with uh, characters and words, lines, as well as links as I add support for links and basically for the runtime text input component. This works, by the way, with the event system in Unity. I guess I forgot to show that real quick. If I go to this little script here, this is just a text script that um, uses the different interfaces that Unity provides, which is on pointer enter, pointer exit, pointer click. In this case, if we scroll down to the on pointer click, you can see that this is where I've actually implemented the changing colors for the words themselves. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please feel free to post. The last minor, minor thing I want to show is, let me delete this completely, uh, is that I made a change in terms of word tracking so that in the previously this uh, apostrophe would cause this to be one and two words, which in theory it is, but when I play around with word, you know, Microsoft Word, uh, it does when you double click on its, it reports it as a single word. Um, so I made sure that this behavior um, has been corrected. So it's an example. Um, in this mode, it's showing just the words. Obviously, the, the period is not a word, so it's excluded. And that's if I was to double click on the word example in Microsoft Word, the period would not be highlighted. So that's it. Um, thank you for watching.